At the third drop site, we see JJ and his team peering over the ridge. They see the beacon blinking. As they move forward, there is a shot and they see one of the soldiers keels over. JJ looks around, but sees nothing. It's an ambush! They take cover as more men open fire on their position. Black Peter stands up and fires a flare into the sky. JJ tries to return fire, but is pinned down and he turns to an elf. Is, is there any way you can get to that beacon? The elf looks up. Seems like 50 meters or so. Can you try to deactivate it? The elf nods. As they get up to run, they are shot dead. You're not going anywhere near that beacon, Bushwhacker. Even if you stand up, we will put you down. Jiji appears over the ridge as more of the stagmen advance. Alright, lay down a suppressive fire. Jiji and his team open fire, but it doesn't appear to hinder the stags. One of them leaps over and kills a soldier, but JJ fires, hitting him in the head. Take six men to secure the beacon. I'll deal with the bushwhacker myself. One of the stagmen nods as Black Peter waltzes over, shooting an elf that tries to stop him. JJ continues firing when the gun is shot out of his hand, and he looks over to see Peter leering at him. There will be no escape for you. As he says this, there is a loud roar and they see the dropship crash before them. Peter looks at him. I will give you marks for effort, but you haven't won anything. As he says this, there is another shot and Black Peter kneels down to see Luke and his team arriving. You were saying? Everyone out! We accomplished our goal. Luca runs over to JJ. <laughs> we're too late. They secured the beacon. Yeah, I can see that. And the drop timetable's moved up. We estimated we had four hours, but they must have activated their contingency. He turns to see the ABC stand up and begin lumbering towards them. Luca and JJ run towards the truck as the soldiers lay down a suppressing fire and the truck speeds away. Back at HQ, the generals and Santa are in a meeting when the teams return. Report. Sir, we couldn't secure the third drop. They they laid out an ambush. Damn! The drop came in three hours earlier than expected. Now they're getting desperate. They know we're onto them. And Black Peter himself was there. Ready to say hello. Was Krampus with him? JJ shakes his head. I haven't heard from him in the past 24 hours. You, you don't think. Did he leave with you guys? No. He stayed behind to cover our escape. Alright, then we have to assume the worst. The Russians figured out he helped you guys escape and saw him as a liability. Makes sense. So, we now have two ABCs dropped from the moon in the past 48 hours now. What do we do? Well, we can use that to our advantage. How? We lure the APCs to our base as a... diversion. And attack the Russian base itself. Do they have any more drops? From the communication we've intercepted, that's pretty much it. They've been exposed and now know... They know we know. So, General, what do we do? The two ABCs lumber towards the base as JJ leans on a machine gun. He looks around as General McKenzie peers out the binoculars. Alright everybody, look sharp. ETA 3 minutes. One of the APCs opens fire, hitting a terminal and killing a few soldiers. Steady man. Steady. You're not expecting us to fight those things with small arms. We're not fighting those things. They can see through the mist, several figures emerge. All right, let's show them what a Canadian welcoming committee can do. Jiji looks up. Come on, guys. 
Meanwhile, a truck pulls up at the checkpoint at the base where a Russian soldier stops them. He looks in and checks the papers before waving them in. As they make it into the terminal, they see three more APCs being prepared. Lee and his team hurry out with guns drawn. Alright, we find Kolonev, hold him, and we shut down those APCs. Got it? They all nod and hurry out. We see a figure walking around looking after the party and then scurries to one of the APCs. As he walks in, he sees two pilots checking the systems. What have you been? We need to go. No. The figure shoots both pilots in the heads and hurls them out of the escape hatch. He then removes his helmet to reveal it's Luca. I was powdering my nose. Uh, need to look nice for a special occasion like this. Now. He begins pressing buttons and the machine lurches forward. Hang on, fellas. I'm a coming. Meanwhile, at HQ, JJ is firing at the advancing men. Black Peter is waving his men forward. Keep moving, you slags! Overwhelm them! A stag leaps over the parapet to scalp JJ, but a nutcracker impales him. The nutcracker is then blown apart by a grenade, and JJ draws his breath. Aim for the head! Aim for its head! One of the gunners is preparing to take aim when he leans forward. The stag runs over and grabs the controls, but JJ runs over and tackles him to the ground. The stag gets the upper hand, but JJ reaches for a dagger and plunges it into the stag's chest. He then crawls onto the turret and aims for the APC's head and fires. At the base, Colonel looks at the monitor. Sir, one of the APCs is down. Sh should we send? No. He then turns around. Yes? Sir, one of the APCs in the hangar has been activated. I know, it's on its way to Alaska. He hears a beep. What? Inside the APC, Luca hears a beep and presses the button. Where are you going? You're supposed to rendezvous with the strike force. You're deviating from the count- Luca shuts off the radio. Always with the negative waves, Moriarty. Always with the negative waves. Back at HQ, we see the guns have been destroyed and numerous bodies lying around. General McKenzie is severely wounded. <coughs> Fall back! <laughs> Fall back! JJ runs over. Come on, I got you. N no, 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 no. Just, just, just leave me, just... Just leave. JJ grabs him and waddles away as the APC crushes one of the buildings. More soldiers rush in as Black Peter surveys the carnage. Sir, we have them on the run. I'm aware of that. He turns to the destroyed APC behind him. Find Santa. And bring him to me. And the Americans and Canadians? Dispose of them. I want no survivors. The APC lumbers forward, firing. As JJ carries General McKenzie, hears a shot and sees McKenzie's been hit in the head. He lowers him down and feels a gun press against his head. Well, isn't this fortunate? Eh, don't turn around. I hate you, Bushwhacker. I hate you and your friends. I hate you for forcing me to kill an old friend, all because you made him weak. Are you gonna talk or shoot me? Before he can say anything else, there's a loud blast and sees the APC collapse. JJ uses the opportunity to punch Black Peter and shoot him in the knee as the APC crashes to the ground. He sees another APC lumber forward and he takes aim with his gun. What am I even doing? As the APC draws near, the hatch opens and Luca pops out. Figured it was you. Lee wouldn't let you on his team? Nah, I improvised. JJ nods. He then hears chatter on his radio. Uh, hello? JJ! Can you get over here? What happened? Uh... At the base, we see Lee and his team pinned down with a few soldiers lying dead near the control room. It looks like they knew we were coming. Activate the other APCs. Whoever took the first one will return to save these wretches. Go! Yeah... So there's that. Before JJ can say anything else, he sees the APC lumber off. Helps on the way, good buddy. 
Meanwhile, Lee grabs a discarded rifle and opens fire, kill killing a Russian soldier. He gets up and runs to the other side, where an elf is sheltering behind a dead nutcracker. He looks at her leg to see it badly mangled. He kneels down and begins to apply pressure. Can you move? She nods weakly. She tries to stand up, but collapses. He sees a pool of blood around her. He hands her the rifle and rips off a piece of cloth and ties it around her leg. Stay there, alright? I want you to fire on any Russian who moves past this point. Got it? She nods. Lee grabs two handguns and runs out, firing them and dives behind a trash can to see the commander. So, this is going to plan. Kolonev mentioned an APC went off grid. He, you know anything about that? I have an idea. But, I'm not sure if we'll be around to figure it out. Meanwhile, outside the base, two APCs are online and begin lumbering forward to form a defensive pattern as Russian soldiers take their position. Suddenly, there is a blast that hits the ground, sending the soldiers all over the place. The APCs open fire as Luca, inside the rogue APC, returns fire. Ah, shit! He maneuvers to avoid the fire, but is rocked backwards by a blast. He tries to hit them, but cannot get a good aim. Ah, don't tell me. They knocked out the targeting scanners? He grits his teeth. Alright, then we'll do this mano a mano. He pushes the ABC forward and clashes with the first one. There's a struggle and Luca aims the cans at the legs and fires. One of the legs collapses and the ABC falls and Luca steps on, its, on the head. HA <laughs> HA! Score one for the North Pole! His victory celebration is short-lived as the second APC hits him, sending him to the ground. He scurries back to the controls to see it smoking. No, 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 come on, buddy, hang, hang, hang in there. It lurches forward. Yes! I knew you had it in you! <laughs> Uh-oh. He sees the second APC has caught onto his idea and is now ramming him. He pushes forward, but to no avail. He can see the pilots making gestures, and he gives them the bird. He grabs a gun from the corner and shoots the glass before firing at the pilots. They return fire and it hits him and he falls to the ground. Oh no. That's not good. He sees he is bleeding from his abdomen. He leans against the console and peers over to see the pilot still working to push his APC over. He takes aim and kills one of them before the other can react. He shoots the second pilot. <laughs> Score one for- He sees everything is spinning. He grabs the controls and begins to pilot the APC towards the main building. Inside, we see Lee lying on the ground as Kolnev stands over him, pointing his gun. It is fitting, yes. A pole is to die at the hands of a Russian. Screw you. Vulgar and defiant. But that is all you have left. Your friends are dead and mine have overrun the North Pole. And Alaska will be ours again. There's a thunderous crash, and we see the APC collapse. Kolnev turns to see Luca lying there, bleeding out. Shit. Kolnev turns around. The last of a dying breed. He raises his gun. Does Vidanya. Lee closes his eyes, and there's a bang. He opens his eyes to see Kolnev bleeding, and falls over. To his surprise, he sees Luca leaning against the wall holding a gun with his left arm around his torso. He, he really doesn't know when to shut up, does he? He collapses to the ground, and Lee crawls over and grabs him. Luca! Buddy! Hey! You there? I'm breaking news. The Russian president has recalled his ambassadors to Canada and the United States following the incident at the North Pole. For those of you unaware, the Russians were conducting a clandestine military operation to invade and to occupy Alaska as part of their imperial reclamation agenda. UN monitors are expected to visit the lunar city of Alta Vista next week over the construction of APCs which, if true, would be a violation of the 1998 Lunar Militarization Treaty signed by the leaders of 30 nations who have settlements or facilities on the moon. In addition, Santa Claus, the leader of the North Pole, is expected to make a trip to New York to make a speech before the UN. 
No doubt there will be a clamor to see jolly old Saint Nick even though Christmas is technically two months away. As the anchor talks, we see sol Russian soldiers being marched out of the base with their arms up while Santa is shaking hands with General Notice. We see medics take Luca to the infirmary with Lee and JJ in tow. In the infirmary, the medic looks over at him. You three just can't stand out of trouble, can you? First you, and now your friend. Yeah, we do have a thing for getting into scrapes. Oh, will he be alright? Yeah, he lost a lot of blood and suffered from some contusions. Surgeons managed to patch him up. A lot of trauma, but he'll pull through. He'll need to be under observation for a few days. As they listen, Santa and General Notice walk in. How's he doing? Uh, nothing that chicken soup and some R&R &R can't fix. Now make sure he gets all the help he needs. It, it's the least I can do. Thank you. Gentlemen, you did a phenomenal job. He looks at a sedated Luca. I'm proud to have served alongside you. All of you. Ha happy to help. He salutes them and leaves with Santa. A soldier enters. Are right, you boys ready to go home? What about him? We'll look after him, I promise. As they head to the hangar, the same elf approaches Lee. Thank you, Lee. Yeah. Yeah, no problem. She hands him a device. What's this? A time dial. A gift from the Palantir to the North Pole, from centuries past. Technically not supposed to have it, but he did save us. And considering the circumstances under which we sought your help. Yeah. I'm sorry, the who? Just say a date, and give a time, and twist the dial. And what happens next? She gives him a kiss and walks away. Lee stands there for a second and hurries onto the plane. As he looks at it, he sees JJ has dozed off. He draws the dial closer to his lips. September the 4th, 2017. 9 in the morning. He twists the dial. At first nothing happens and he feels the plane shudder and shake as it hits turbulence. He sighs as JJ turns over and continues to snore. Okay... The plane fills with golden light and suddenly he finds himself in his apartment with his luggage. He looks at his phone and sees that he's back at that time. Wow. Trippy. As he says this, the elf appears. He shows her the dial and she nods and vanishes. Huh. What a useful tool. I could learn to like. He looks down to see it is gone. Knew it was too good to be true. Flash forward to Christmas Day. The three wake up in their individual apartments and scurry to their living rooms to find presents under the tree. Lee opens the box and peers inside. Alright! Rare Japanese whiskey! Allegedly the only brand fit for the Emperor himself! Luca opens the box and grins. <laughs> what do you know? A 1963 Rolex Submariner. And it's on a Bond NATO strap. Man, I given up all hope of ever finding this. A three-year subscription to Hulu. Huh. I was hoping for Netflix. They each read the card attached. Aww. All in a day's work. I should have asked for a movie deal or something. In the rooms of the Russian base, we see a figure shambling in. As he draws closer, we see it's Black Peter, who has survived being shot and crushed by debris. He walks to the terminal and sees a puddle of dried blood. As he draws his breath, he hears something. He holds still, fingers his gun, and then turns to see a Russian officer. He lowers his gun. Didn't think there was anyone left. The officer smiles. Shouldn't you be on your way to Moscow? Or don't align with Moscow. Really? Then who? He presents a medallion with the Anubis insignia. My calling is... 
higher. <laughs> you, I have observed, feel the same way. Come off it. This... He waves his arm dramatically. This is where ambition has landed me. Ambition is not the culprit. You have directed it towards transient goals. He steps forward. I can offer you something more. I present you with... Proposition. What do you say? Black Peter points the gun at his head and then scoffs before lowering it. Good. I see we have understanding. The epilogue. In Kiev, in the intelligence office, a man walks down the corridor and knocks on the door. He opens and enters to see a woman sitting at her desk. Yes. Uh, excuse me, minister. He hands her the file. She opens it and reads carefully. Are you sure? He nods. The Americans and Canadians thwarted the attack, but there were four men who influenced the president and pushed for operation. They were the ones who helped finance machinery in the attack, and I suspect that they are the ones we truly need to target. And we know for sure who these men are. The man nods. Without any question, Minister. Should we alert them? For certain. But also... The woman turns her screen around to reveal the bushwhackers. Pavel, do you know who these are? He studies the screen. No, not really. Our intelligence informs us that it was the North Pole who first approached them. They infiltrated Russian installation on Alta Vista and they let attack that thwarted Russians. We may have use for them. Uh, are you sure? The woman nods. Inform our liaison, Mr. Mizinski. He will need to get in touch with CIA and also speak with them. She points to the screen. Whether they realize it or not, they have stepped into a much larger war, and we will need every ally we can procure. Understood. As he leaves, she reviews the file. On the folder, it reads, Diadoki. And that will do it for the Christmas special, The Way to Eternity. Um, just a heads up, um, season one of the Bushwhackers will conclude next month. Um, and we'll, most likely I will be doing a, um, we'll be doing two episodes for that Monday. After that, the Bushwhackers will go on hiatus and will return sometime around March with the Diadoki, where the Bushwhackers target and go on a kill mission to eliminate the four oligarchs who were responsible for the Russian invasion of Alaska. So, be sure to like, comment, subscribe. There will be a ton of new content coming out for 2023. Um, more behind, there will be a podcast about behind the scenes of the Bushwhackers. There will be limited series. There will be more essays, more Fantasy Fridays, Coffee Soup gets even raunchier, and I may, may, just possibly may, Write a song about vasectomies. So, be sure to like, comment, subscribe, help the channel grow, and as always, thank you so much for watching. Have a safe and Merry Christmas and Happy New Year, and I'll see you on the other side. Take it easy. Bye.